from WPBF 25. This is On the Record with Todd McDermott. Every Friday during the high school football season, WPBF 25 recognizes a community champion, a person who helps support their home team in unique ways. Our WPBF 25 community ambassador, Mike Lyons, is at every game to present the award. And this morning we meet some of these amazing people. So joining me right now are Michael and Harriet Corbett, the unofficial grandparents of the King's Academy <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Athletics Department. It's, it it's in the script. <laughs> okay. Both of you are lifelong educators. Michael, you have a sports background. So why don't we just start with that? We have so much to get to. Tell me about your background. And um, how much time did you say we had? No. <laughs> I, well, no. I could go on forever, so it's, it's much as you uh, I started in seventh and eighth grade playing football. My brother was uh, the football coach, and uh, he played quarterback when he was in high school and college. So. He trained me to be a quarterback. So I, I quarterbacked the team, and then uh, high school, I was quarterback for four years with the high school team in Chicago. And then I got a scholarship to college. And There played. you are. That's <laughs> a college guy right there. Right. Yeah. And played four years in, uh, in Northwest Missouri State. Um, they won six national championships, by the way, but none of them were at the time I was there, so uh, <laughs> kind of made me humble. So. Okay. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I left there, went back to Chicago, and started teaching and looking for a head football job. Um, there was none. Two years later, I had an opportunity to come down to Miami, Florida, to a private school down there, and be the head football coach. So uh, we were there for 28 years, and then uh, we left and went to um, Atlanta, and uh, I got involved with cross country and track. They didn't have a football team then. So that's pretty much uh, where we were. We retired and came down to West Palm Beach. And here you are. And Harriet, you were a full-time teacher. And, full -time. Yes. and do you still volunteer as a teacher? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, we, I taught uh, since 1968. I tell the kids I'm older than dirt. All right. But uh, in any case, it's been a long journey. I've loved every minute of it. I've taught third grade in middle school, high school, uh, assistant principal a while. But... I love the classroom and I love the kids and it's amazing. Well, it's amazing. before I before I get to, to more of your connection with the kids, I want to hear about your connection, if we can, just how you two met. <laughs> well, we uh, we have the same story, but there's a little bit different spin on uh, on how we As met. As there usually is. <laughs> um, yes, okay. I came down, like I said, to Miami to be the head football coach, but because I had spent so much time in the North, I needed to get acclimated to the, the hot weather so I could coach the team and uh, not push them too tough, too hard. So I asked, the school was putting a second story addition on the building, so I asked him if I could work construction to get acclimated to that kind of uh, weather and heat. And I was in the hallway one day uh, putting nails in my nail apron and uh, I had bent down and all of a sudden I heard somebody say, oh, hello, are you the new football coach? And I looked up and there was this picture of loveliness. Uh, <laughs> I hope this is Harriet you're talking <laughs> about. All right, now let's get Harriet's side the of the other story. Side of that story is okay. uh, he had come down previous that uh, year before. Uh, there were at least uh, 40, 40 girls that were interested in him at the same time, all single. Uh, but that day uh, we met and uh, he had on his hard hat and he had on his boots and he had his shirt open and perspiration glistening. And uh, wow, that's he could have taken me home that it. night, okay? okay. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's not my lifestyle, all right? Uh, but by October, we were dating regularly. December, he proposed. June, we got married. So, so how long have you been married now? 53. Wow, it congratulations. Is that is yep. fantastic. It is. How did you get connected with King's Academy? Uh, well, Go ahead. Uh, we, uh, when we retired, we wanted to be with our grandkids. We were looking for a school. Uh, the uh, Florida taxes are a lot higher than Georgia taxes. We needed to work. And so uh, we had a connection with uh, Mr. Loveland through uh, one of our past uh, administrators that we worked for. And King's had a wonderful program of uh, not just growing kids academically, but uh, really uh, the spiritual vitality, uh, as well as integrity and character, and that was right down our alley. And uh, we fell in love with it. We started taking uh, bus driving, taking tickets for, he drove for the athletic department, and I started subbing every day. 
and we truly love it, and we're still investing in kids. It's fantastic. That's fantastic. Tell, tell me, and I'm sure people hear this and, and think, I would like to do that. Tell me what you take away from the volunteer work. Oh, wow. Yeah. You want to you wanna start? You start. Okay. Um, working with kids and, and in teaching and in coaching, a, a lot of people don't understand, and it's a, a phrase that's been coined, it's not head to head, but it's heart to heart. And when you see kids and have an opportunity, uh, I have something on my desk that says I, I started teaching because I wanted to be famous and make a lot of money. Uh, that's <laughs> not true, all right? That is not true. But I will tell you the value when you see kids growing, not just intellectually, but physically and socially, emotionally, and with spiritual vitality. And when they find their purpose and they see their inerrant worth Who's this cheerleader yeah. here that I'm looking at? Look at this picture. Yeah. yeah. Who is that? Yes. Oh, oh that is that is my husband. Now, this is I thought so. Volunteer, okay. This is when we volunteer. We uh, we, that we, is, we get involved in the in the programs beyond the classroom, or or both of us, and we uh, and because I was in athletics all my life, um, I had um, I just wanted to do some extracurricular activities with the kids, so. It gets to know the kids more, and, and they get to know us, and life skills are developed through the contacts uh, and the sports, yeah. whether it's a, a win or a loss, there is building, and um, it's just a, yeah, an environment to, that we put ourselves when in. When you're trying to engage a child, if you do not have a, a relationship with them, it just doesn't work. You know, If you're a teacher, you're in the classroom, but most of the time you're outside the classroom. In, in, in learning more about them. That's, that's how you found out where they live. You, you go in their shoes, and then you can relate so much better in the classroom. I mean, it's just, uh, uh, we just had, uh, I wish that, uh, I think most, most teachers might probably do know that, because that's how you develop their relationships, that's how you see them grow, how you see them mature. And, and I think the picture that they just showed was uh, when we went to the state championship, and then last year, they talked me into doing um, uh, the, the Gritty. And uh, would you believe it even hit ESPN? And I told my husband, I said, I've been teaching how long? And I'm famous for the Gritty. That was it. So, anyway. And <laughs> well, this was us when we were interviewed a few weeks ago. With, with our community ambassador, Mr. Mike Lyons. Yeah. Well, I want to tell you both, I want to thank you personally for what you do. I'm sure the real victory for all these students is getting to know the two of you. Hey, listen, it's a blessing to us. I mean, it, it, it keeps us young, it keeps us fiber. In our old age, we don't want to be a vacuum. We want to invest in kids as long as we're in this, as long as we're on this earth. I know you have 53 years of marriage, but you don't seem old to me, and I hope you keep going for a yeah. long, long time. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Yes, thank you so okay. much. Okay. Michael and Harriet Corbett. Here. Exciting. Next, we're gonna meet the community champion who's worked in and served the Indian River County area for decades. WPBF 25 News at 5 and 6. Breaking news as it happens. This is what we're learning. More local news from trusted journalists. Relevant stories. In-depth investigations. Reporting that holds the responsible accountable. South Florida's most trusted meteorologists. Tracking a line of severe storms. With certified most accurate forecasts that never have you second-guessing plans. Make time to watch WPBF 25 News at 5 and 6. on the record on WPBF 25. It's our pleasure here on the record and I welcome Teddy Floyd this morning. Mr. Floyd was Deputy Sheriff Floyd. Yes. In River County for 31 years. His resume is much longer than that. Let's try to run down your vast contributions to all the outreach programs you've been a part of. When you say volunteer and get involved, that's Teddy Floyd. So give us an idea of some of what you do and have done. Oh. Yeah. First, you Getting involved with everything in our community. And uh, first of all, I want to give honor to Christ because my mom was a pastor. And, um, you know, when she got when I got on the force, 
they told me, they said, just don't wear a badge and write tickets and harass people. So my first niche was to get involved. I coached football. I um, got involved with my community up in the Gifford community and in the River County. And I got to know everybody in places, and I wanted to help. My um, philosophy in our family is never look down on a man unless you're picking him up. So when I would see people that need help or needed something, I would go in and find a way to help them. And uh, it's just been doing it ever since. Service seems to be very, very important to you. I know that now you're no longer with the Sheriff's Department, but you are a security officer at Vero yes. Beach High School. Yes. And, uh, you know, people can say it from their perspective on the outside, but when you get in the inside, and every educator I want to say to you guys, I applaud you from the bottom of my heart. From a law enforcement, we can clink, clink, and take you off. But to deal with it every day, constantly trying to keep our kids in a direction of focus, to keep them going to college and, and, and being a productive citizen, it takes a lot. And uh, it is. And then, you know, you look at the news every day, there's shootings in every schools and colleges. I'm very blessed in New River County. Tell me about your connection with the kids you work with, uh, both in athletics and uh, as a security officer, because that must be something special for you. The way you, you speak, it must be something that's really part of your being. It is. And, you know, actually, it started when I was a police officer because you would meet the parents, and now I'm meeting their offspring mm -hmm. going to school. And uh, they would know me from putting bikes, Walmart, or uh, we gave out 800 some turkeys in the community to make sure that somebody have. And the kids will remember that officer, that's Officer Teddy. He, he, he's, a, he's a friend, not an enemy. And uh, we would help him. And now, transitioning over to the high school every day, if you got a problem, they might not talk to one person, but they'll come to me and say, Coach Teddy, can I talk to you about something? Yes, because they knew I've dealt with their parents and other siblings in their family. So it's easier to deal with. You mentioned Coach Teddy. There is some coaching involved in what you do yes. as well. Tell us about that. Man, I've been coaching at Vero Beach High School for 30-some years. Um, I started in the Coach Livings and uh, worked my way to where I am now, Coach Lenny Jankowski and all the coaching staff. I have an awesome principal, Mr. O'Keefe, and this superintendent, David Moore, is awesome. He and the super, uh, assistant superintendent, Seymour, they allow me to be me. They allow me to be with the kids. Um, when they can't, like I said, getting at Vero, we expect to win. When we walk on the field, there's no second chances of going. We want to line up and we want to run right through people. Let me ask, always happen. Let me ask you one more question. Mm -hmm. And that is, what does it mean to you when you see these young people you've known through their high school years graduate and go on to great things? A lot. Todd, man, it brings a lot of brother, tear to my eye. It, when you can see kids moving forward, and you, every day I look on the news and you see a kid that is lost to something, whether it's dope, drugs, whatever, and you see a kid that is walking across the stage and getting a degree, I'm very proud. I felt like I had something to do with that. Very proud of that. Well, I'm sure that you have had a lot to do with a lot of the lives of these children. And oh, we'll, yeah. we'll continue because you're not going anywhere. No, I'm not going anywhere. All right. You know, we're going to get a little dance in, you know that. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, we would do that now, but we don't have any more time, Teddy. No. Teddy Floyd. <laughs> don't leave me. No, I'll just stop. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank you, sir. Morning. And let me say this alive. Thank you for all you do on during the storms and everything. I used to listen to you when I was a police officer. Well, Thank you for all you do. It's my pleasure, and it's a, an honor to meet you. Stay right there. You stay right there. We go on the record next with the community champion who is truly the jack of all trades. Thank you again. Navigate West Palm Beach traffic, WPBL 25 News Morning. Here's what Floridians are saying about StormSmart custom hurricane protection. We can't tell you how perfect the installation is. We were over the moon pleased. The hurricane shades on our lanai are so functional and beautiful. They block incoming rain and sun and allow me to see out. The next hurricane season will find us very well prepared. We will absolutely endorse Storm Smart. Call 866-60-SMART and start designing your custom Storm Smart screens and high impact windows today. Greenway Kia of 
West Palm Beach is overstocked with new Kias arriving daily. So now is the best time to save thousands on your new Kia. Shop one of the area's largest selections of new Kias, including hybrids and the fully electric EV6. Make no payments until 2024. Have a trade? Get up to $6,000 over Kelly Blue Book Fair Market value for any trade. And if you have a job bringing home $350 weekly, we want to approve your credit. Only at Greenway Kia of West Palm Beach. We want to see you in a Greenway Kia. There's a lot of things in this world happening right now, and consumers like myself want some level of control. I am a solar development project manager, and I get to be on the forefront of the best technology to produce clean energy. We've transitioned from 4 0 to natural gas, and we're moving responsibly towards solar, battery, and green hydrogen, and this will all ultimately bring savings to the customer. I know that FPL is looking at other ways that down the line will reduce my bill. We can be less dependent on oil, and the future is bright. Welcome back. Joining us now is Dr. Robert Baker, the assistant principal of Boynton Beach Community High School, another one of our WPBF 25 community champions during the high school football season. First, I'm looking at you, I'm not sure I believe this, but 38th year? 38 years, yes. Tell me about those 38 years. I mean, how did you get into this? Um, I, both my parents were public school teachers in Miami-Dade, and I wanted to become a lawyer. So when I got my graduate degree, well, my undergraduate degree in political science, they said, come back home. We don't have money to send you to law school. So they said, come home. Why don't you teach for a while, save some money? First year, I had a very challenging year. Second year, I really liked it. Third year, I said, I don't want to be an environmental lawyer at that point. Uh, and I started love teaching. And I started teaching uh, history. And I've been in it for now 38 years. And here you are. Yes. And, and I should just reveal that there are two political science majors sitting here, neither of whom is a lawyer. I, I, yes, had, the same, yes. I had the same plan yes. once upon a time. Um, I, I would like to know about your joy in working with young people because you are our community champion. Okay. And I know that there, there's a special bond you have. I, uh, obviously, this is something that you, you did. Maybe your parents thought it was going to be for just a while, but here you are. So it must mean something to you. It's, it takes uh, a person with a great heart. Uh, I champion anybody who wants to go into education now and the people that are in the trenches. For the last 22 years, I've worked in Title I schools, which are lowest socioeconomic schools, schools with very diverse populations. And I love working uh, with these students. My, my wife was in the IT field, so I was in Miami Day for 12 years, New Orleans pre-Katrina for two, San Francisco for six. We came back to Florida uh, because my, our parents were older and we relocated to Palm Beach County. Um, but wherever I've been, uh, I've been blessed to be with colleagues that really are dedicated to the field to help uh, young people, all middle school and high school. And I've had the, I've been in the classroom 22 years, in administration 16 years, and uh, I still love it because of where I'm at. I'm at Boynton Beach High School, and we've got such wonderful programs there. We've got Emory Riddle Aeronautics University where people get pilot's license. We've got a wonderful medical academy. Uh, School, we got arts in our school, so we got a wonderful chorus program, dance program. This past weekend, we had Dream Girls. So it's the thing that's keeping me in the field right now is the, are the, my colleagues at school, the great teachers, the friends, the parents, everybody who's dedicated at the school I'm at, because I could retire right now, but I'm, I'm energized. Well, they don't want you to papers. retire because they nominate no. you to be a community champion. Yes. You are a key figure there. What is the, the role at night for you there? It's a little different at night? It's, it's I, I have, the, I, like I said before, it's kind of like an old Van Halen song, the best of both worlds, because I come in at about 11, and I get to work with uh, the students in the cafeteria, get to visit some classes, help with hallway supervision, help with dismissal, and then after school, I work with the clubs and the sports a little bit, help with the activity buses, distribute snacks, and then at six the night, uh, people come in. So we have a GED program, we have an ESOL program at night with over 200 adults trying to learn English. And I get to work with teachers that work all day. So we have uh, t uh, adults that really want to enhance their skill sets. And uh, the teachers are great there. And I guess get to go around and, and support them. That's what my goal is to support the, the adults, the teachers, the students, whatever way I can uh, to support Dr. Fo, the principal, uh, our mission in our school, in our district, is to educate, affirm, and aspire for everybody. And Dr. Fuller's uh, philosophy is 1% better every single day. And that's what I'm trying to do and what we all are trying to do at Boynton Beach Community High School. I just have 30 seconds left, but I, sure. I, I need to establish this because I can see it in your eyes. Yes. 
you made the right decision 38 years ago to go into education. I, I'm blessed. I still want to be here, uh, and I'm blessed to be at the school. And to anybody else in the future, I say, you know, if you got the right heart, it doesn't pay, but if you got the right heart, it's, it's a tremendously rewarding uh, p uh, position I've been in, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Well, we're so glad that you joined us today, and uh, your story is inspiring. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's Dr. Robert Baker. Thank you for being a community champion. I have to introduce you to the band Mama Really Takes It to the Next Level. WPPF 25 News Mornings and Good Morning America. Welcome to Bears Furniture, where quality, detail, and style are limited only by your imagination. With our complimentary design services, you'll work alongside our talented team to choose the perfect options for you and your lifestyle. Thousands of fabrics, finishes, patterns, and styles. If you can dream it, we can help you design it. Where? Bears. Best brands at the best prices. Shop Vero Beach Outlets. Off Route 60, west of 95, exit 147 in Vero Beach. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Your Buick parks itself. That's so you. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. I only got a six cents. And a head-up display. They're here. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Just announced for this holiday season. Get 1.9% APR on select 2023 Buick SUV models. Plus, current eligible non-GM owners get up to 3,500 purchase allowance. Plus, no monthly payments for 90 days. Welcome back. Now meet Alana Gazelle. She's a band mom at South Fork High School in Stewart. Lana, you are a nominee for our community champion this year. And now you get to do this. Yay. How did you get involved in volunteering in South Fork? Oh gosh, if I'm being entirely honest with you, I was voluntold. I was told I was absolutely needed and I, I needed to find something I was willing to do because I would be there whether I wanted to be or not. Really? I loved that. And tell us, <laughs> tell us what you chose to do and what you do. As a matter of fact, I opted for the props committee because I was really excited about the idea of building and being behind the scenes as much as possible. And I was immediately skirted to one project after another and as a result made a lot of great volunteer band mom friends. See, this is what happens though. If you do a good job volunteering, they find other things for you to do. More work. So, yeah. so let's describe the, the title band mom just so we get it clear what the band mom does. There's band parents okay. in our little family sector, which is really cool. And our South Fork community is really a big family. And lots of people say that, but I mean it. Mm -hmm. And it's been really cool. We have lots of moms, lots of dads, lots of grandparents involved making all of the behind the scenes things happen. And nobody knows how much really has to go behind the scenes to make a band program successful. Right, and, but I also understand that all this volunteer work you do, but at the football games, you work in a concession stand, yeah. which means you're not seeing very much because you're in the concession stand. I'm not seeing that much. I have been really blessed. Our parents are phenomenal, and so I have the ability to step away, okay. and they are more than competent. They handle everything. I actually get to go run out, get another gaggle of parents together, and we all do the little march together over to all of the props <laughs> to ensure that our band gets all of their props out on the field, and then we run off really quick. We do all of our videoing. I have the luxury of actually getting to see the show as a result of that responsibility. And then as soon as the show's done, they blow the whistle, and all of us parents are running back out again to haul all the equipment and um, and the props that we put together to support the show back off the field and then I get to go run back to concession. So tell me what the relationship is with the kids and what the feedback you get from the students. At the beginning of the year, I think they didn't quite know what to make of an involved group of parents because we've had some really phenomenal parents showing up and really getting involved this year. So they didn't quite know what to make of that at first. We've evolved to the place where now they're actively giving feedback. They're excited about being engaged in the process of designing stuff hmm. and letting us know what's working and what's not, which has been really fun. What's that we were looking at, that all that 
<laughs> fabric. There was all kinds of things going oh, on. Oh gosh, so actually that was a, a picture just now of a whole bunch of our parents who got together to go and do one of the competitions. That one was actually up in Orlando. Uh, this is a picture of the ship that we put together, and so it was a giant pirate-themed show this year. I thought so. I saw a porthole. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought we it was got a ship. lots of amazing parents out there. We created an enormous ship with the mast, with the scaffolding, the whole nine yards, and waves beyond it. This is what lots I was looking at. Look stuff. at that. Oh, God, that fog. <laughs> that fog was a trip. It's fog, of that, course. It, yes. How can, how can I not recognize fog? Oh, gosh. Let me ask you before I let you go what it means to you to be involved in the lives of these children slash young adults, soon to be adults. Oh, yeah. they're all young adults now. They're very specific yes. about that. It's everything. And this is a world that we're in where we're not cool anymore. We're phasing out of the cool. And so to be able to be involved and be impactful and see what they need and be able to um, provide it without them even necessarily knowing that we're the mechanics behind it still showing up for them, it means everything to me. And our school needs so much support. We need so much from our parents and from our staff and administration. So it's a really big treat to be able to show up in that way and be that voice advocating for just how much we need. Lana Gazelle, thank you for being community champion. I know South Fork could use the help of some charity, some donors, and we'll get that done for you. Thank Thanks you. again. And thank you for being part of this Sunday morning program on this Christmas Eve day. As always, we invite you to be part of our discussion each and every Sunday right here at 10 a.m. Until then, you can watch this morning's episode of On the Record and every episode on our website, WPBF.com, and on our free WPBF 25 News app. We hope you have a wonderful holiday with your families. Matter of fact, Solano O'Brien is next. We'll see you again next Sunday. It's not just about the adrenaline rush. It's about transforming lives. Oh my God, she got it! I'm on a mission to help people rediscover themselves. Finding Adventure, a new season, stream for free only on Very Local. Good morning, America. I'm Jerry. I smoked and I have late stage COPD. I'm hoping to get on the lung transplant list, but I don't know if I'll be accepted in time. My children are really worried. My tip is every morning, give your kids a call or send them a text. It may be the last time that you do. Tobacco Free Florida offers free nicotine replacement therapy to help start your quit journey. Call 1-877-YOU-CAN-NOW. Get ready to go. On Tuesday, December 26th, the Rooms to Go New Year's sale begins. Your chance to get big savings and interest-free financing until January 2028. On beautiful living rooms, bedrooms, dining rooms, and it gets better. Finance and for the first three months, pay just $1 a month. $1. Then make 45 interest-free equal monthly payments until January 2028. Starting Tuesday at the Rooms to Go New Year's sale. Last year, more clients hired Morgan & Morgan than ever before. With over 2 million phone calls last year alone, more people in more cities across America want more. When you hire Morgan & Morgan, you're also hiring a family business. And after 35 years, we now have more offices, more staff, and more lawyers than any other injury firm in the world. Protecting America, fighting for you. Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan for the people. It's the final days of the Volkswagen Better Year End event with Sign Then Drive offers available right now. Sign Then Drive with zero down on your favorite new SUVs, like a fun new Taos, seven passenger Tiguan, with a totally redesigned, luxurious new Atlas or Atlas Cross Sport, or choose a new Jetta for just $249 a month. Don't miss the final days of year end specials, including Sign Then Drive. Shop VWFlorida.com. The stories that matter in Green Acres. WPBF 25 News Mornings.
I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. Today, we're serving up a holiday smorgasbord, starting with a Minneapolis restaurant and a menu dating back centuries. We introduce you to its award-winning chef and follow his journey from the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. So we had a lot of um, just basic staples, government cereals, government powdered milk, you know, and government just everything. To becoming a cuisine influencer, how he's planning to bring the indigenous food movement to a table near you. And this high schooler came to the U.S. from Ethiopia when he was just four years old. Now he's on a mission to save lives. My bar soap is completely novel. It is the first of its kind that can help treat against skin cancers. He tells us what inspired him. But first, an epic family reunion. We catch up with the Rand family to see how an exploration into family history is forging new ties. That story now on Matter of Fact. Holidays are a time when many families come together, take part in traditions, talk about their history. And chances are someone in your family has tried to trace the family tree. The results can be surprising. Just ask the Rand family. I first met them 15 years ago in 2008 when they learned their family tree was more diverse than they knew. It's just after midnight in Houston, Texas. And the Rand family sets out for a family reunion. More than 300 Rands descend on the city of Atlanta. We tell our children, when you have nobody, you have family. 65 and above forward, taller people, please work your way to the back. But there is a mystery surrounding the Rand family. Ruby Steen McGee is known as the family historian. That is part oh. one. Everything she's learned over the years is recorded in these huge albums. There she is. From that, Ruby Steen was able to locate her great-great-grandfather in this cemetery. Buried here, William Harrison Rand, the patriarch of the family and a white man. With this discovery, Ruby Steen's curiosity grew. She knew there had to be more. Using the internet, she traced the Rands back to London, England. They were a family of doctors and architects who came to Virginia in the mid-1700s and fought in the Revolutionary War. And according to these old documents, slave owners. I used to hear them say that my great-grandfather, Harold Rand, was run out of North Carolina to Mississippi because he, was, he had a black woman living with him and his wife, and he came to Texas. Here, Lodi, Texas. From old census records, Ruby Steen put together a family tree. William Rand fathered seven children by his white wife, Sally and six children by his black mistress, Anne. Court documents show the two families live close to each other. While little information exists about Anne's life, family members believe she was not a slave. Ruby Steen's research led to an even more surprising discovery. Martha Hicks, also William Rand's great-great-granddaughter, and Ruby Steen's white cousin. A letter from this wonderful lady. I said, dear Mrs. Hicks, and I went on to tell her that I was the great, great granddaughter of William Harrison Hale Rand, and boy, did she really write me back. <laughs> what you write? And she said, now we are cousins, and you either call me Martha or Cousin Martha. She won me over right there. <laughs> we arranged for Martha, her husband Carl, and their granddaughter Natalie to meet their black cousins in Lodi. <laughs> what was that moment like? I, I wanted to cry. I really did. Before I met you, I wasn't sure if you were going to be excited about having black cousins. There are a lot of people who, that would not be good news. It would not have happened 40 years ago. I think we've made quite a bit of progress. It's an honor. 